Peter Becker when it was called Holy in the Sky, which I think this is pretty much a prolonging of that fantastic festival. And uh, we're doing a tour with Enslaved, uh, organized by the other gates this uh, autumn, so uh, I know the guys really well. So the first day where I'd love to go is to this festival without playing, you know, just hang out. Okay, so are you doing that this year? <laughs> are you going to be here for the... I'm going to stay there for most of the festival, yeah. How about the other guys? Do they come? Uh, no, not this year. Okay. Well, anyway, we're here now because you're going to do the pre-listening for your Lifehugger album. Uh, so, tell me a little bit about the album, about, uh, like, in particular about the thematics, about what does the album cover represent to you, and, and what kind of lyrical themes you were more concentrated on this time. As always, I get, I get inspired by history and philosophy, but most songs don't uh, point to a certain event on this album. It's more, a, more of uh, a personal album, you know, my reflection is just these days, and it's not a concrete theme, I would say. It's more a, my state of mind over the last couple of years. You know, it's been uh, some very hectic and interesting years, some fantastic new times, and uh, some of the most horrible times I've ever experienced in my life. So I guess this album just very much reflects me over the last years. So what is this hunger? To stay alive. Alright. You know, uh, I think that uh, too many people base their life of hope in some way. You know, is there hope for something great happening in an afterlife or whatever? I don't have much hope. I think you have actually to just do everything each day, you know, grab it, don't expect anyone else to source it for you. Mm. Alright. Uh, then about the music, how do you feel that it sounds like a progression anyway to me, so uh, what direction do you think that you've taken the music on this album? I don't know. It's hard to park, but in a certain direction I think, you know, it's... Uh, I've been making music for 25 years now, so it's like I don't really well on what kind of direction I think. I think it's more... Uh, it's a very bare album for us. You know, there's instrumentals, the slower songs, there's some really, really fast songs. And I, you know, I, think, uh, I think it's an album that kind of reflects all the work we've done over the last 25 years, but also somewhat in a fresh start for me. You know? This time we changed label, we changed the recording studio, new designer, recorded a bit differently, so it felt like a, a fresh start, and hopefully that shows on the album. You know, like this, uh, Something new. I think it's important to once in a while just strip, strip everything down, take away the safety net, you know, and uh, just uh, follow the gut instincts based on your will rather than what's supposed to be Well, it sounds like it worked out pretty well. Uh, most of the album is in English, and overall, the albums that you've done, it's kind of been teeter tottering back and forth between the two. Is there any reason or explanation for how you choose which way is going to go? or? Usually I just go with gut feeling again. When I start writing lyrics, I write some in a weekend, some in English, some in lines, and whatever just sticks me, I just follow that one. And uh, I see you a pattern in what to do uh, when I've written something in a weekend, the next album feels off like I want to do English again, and then I go back. You know, it's like I think that it also got what kind of words you can look up, you know, and how you can describe things. Because mm -hmm. the themes and what interests me and how I feel them pretty much doesn't really change that much over the years. So it's more like Finding a different angle, a different perspective. So I think it's, I think that's what's happening. It's becoming more inspired to write in a different language than you just previously thought. When you write in English, are you writing directly into English or are you translating it? I'm writing directly into English. Okay. Do you find it challenging or is it? Feel yeah, of course, it's not. Uh, it's not uh, our, my main language at all. Uh, then again, you know. English all the time, you learn English at an early age and stuff like that, so um, I find it very uh, challenging and sometimes, you know, and there's of course there's many more words in English to describe things, it's more words to describe the uh, atmospheres, feelings that you have. Uh, then again, that might also might you just grab out and say, good shit, you know, it's so many words and describe it, whereas the Norse Norwegian can be uh, a lot more direct and intense sometimes, so you know, of course, Words to select from, so yeah. Now, I understand that the band has maybe some uh, ideas about Norwegian language politics. Yeah. Uh, so, just kind of tying into choosing which language. 
Well, we are, uh, where I come from, is one of the few places that uh, use Nynorsk, uh, which uh, of course is what I will support, this is not what I raised on writing and reading and whatever, but for me it's not really that important anymore. The, the important thing is the dialect, you know, not the uh, chosen written language. Uh, that's most, when you look at it, it's more or less just what it is. I think it's important uh, to keep the traditional dialects, you know, which we have so many of in Norway, differs so much. You know. There's a certain parts in Norway have uh, a lot of difficult time to understand what I'm saying, you know, and uh, I think it's important that we keep that. Uh, this will, of course, change from generation to generation. You can't just say, oh, everything was better before. You know, language always will change, but I think it's also important to try and keep some of the historical aspects of it. But do you also feel that it's important to keep the communication aspect of making sure that everyone can... Yeah, uh, yeah of uh, course. And that everyone is empowered because they have control over their own way of speaking. Yeah. I guess that leads more towards the dialect of what you grow up on, you should be allowed to use that as... Yeah, and I think that like in Norway also, before when I spoke with my father, when he moved to Oslo, the big city and everything, it felt like you had to change a way of talking or whatever, to get a work or something like that. I don't see that anymore, I think that over the last maybe 10, 20, 30 years, people have got a lot more respect for dialects and see them as a valuable part of our history. Uh, how would you say, I think there's a lot of elements about the band that uh, embraces Norwegian-ness. Uh, what would you say is the importance of home and uh, the legacy of Windermere and being Norwegian? What does all of that mean to you? To me, it's mostly based on uh, family perspective. You know, it's all about Everything boils down to your closest ones. For me, it's my uh, closest family. Everything's based on that. Then you have your closest friends, and then you have to get people that meet you in life that you respect and you cherish. Uh, being a Norwegian, of course, this is most Norwegians for me. You know, that's a natural thing. This is, uh, this is where I live. So, for me, this is the core values. Uh, I, I think I've been very lucky to be born in Norway. And Part of history and to be able to have the upbringing I had to have the possibilities I had. And I want my children to have some of the same things and uh, have the same values that I've been and the same uh, said it, options to have this great freedom that I think that so many of can stay for granted. What would you say are some of the values of Norwegianness? What, what are some of the characteristics? What is being a Norwegian? Well, I think that's very difficult questions. <laughs> yes. uh, I think you know it, that it changes so much. You know, I don't. But I, I think that we are used to have respect for one each other, uh, both as persons or uh, property, and to uh, not try to impose too much on uh, of your meetings. You know, if you have something, you respect it in a very strong way. Um, and I think that uh, this is. This is the core of life, you know. Uh, I think this is how you can develop your uh, own strength, you know, and that you can be uh, confident in yourself, that you can actually do what you want to do rather than just following what's happening around you. And being uh, living in a society like Norway, this is a lot easier than many other countries. And uh, then again, I'm not really sure what people see these days in Norway. You know? They take everything for granted for these things we are so wealthy, we have, you can do whatever you want, you know, you can get whatever education work you want, you just have to put in some efforts to do it, you know, and this is a very um, seldom thing if you look into, into the history of my kind, you know, to have so many people having this kind of option, and uh, that's true. So I, I think that's uh, that's something that we've been building, but also been lucky, you know, you know, it's got to do with uh, how we do things, but of course, Oil and whatever, you know, so, so of course it, it's not just something about Norwegian values, but we got it, and I think it's important to, to respect that and uh, try to uh, carry it on for the uh, next generations. Unsurprisingly, a lot of what you say about Norwegianness also sounds a lot like Finland. We come from Finland, and uh, minus the wealth and oil, I think we're pretty uh, close on the same track. What are your um, impressions of Finland? Uh, I guess you've only played there once. 
2016? Well, yeah, no one played a role, so nobody I've been touring with Matt in Finland for a few years. I like the role, of course. I think oh, it's... I'm sorry? Who? Who have you played with? Uh, we played with Film Trotter and so on, with Sean Spencer Ferry, with Jan, with so many other uh, festivals. We finish people all the time, you know. Um, I think that... Uh, I see many, many similarities, you know, in some way. We took with them, I thought it was great. You know. mm -hmm. and, uh, I think there's a lot of the same thought patterns, so a lot of the same uh, humor, maybe lack of humor sometimes, <laughs> that we share, you know, and uh, I think yeah, I connect very good with people from Finland uh, in the same way as I see a lot of similarities with people, of course, from Sweden, you know, there's not that much of difference, there's some differences, but it's like... Something about being from the north. Yeah. The, of course, you have a lot of common factors in your life, and that... Uh, then again, I love to go to other places to get inspired. I, I wouldn't say we have the perfect thing or the best thing, you know, but we got something here. And I think it's important to uh, embrace the good values here, but also go out and uh, try and see your own place perspective and learn from other places. Mm -hmm. So you have an upcoming tour with Paloma. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? How do you, how do you feel about the band and are you excited about it? It's a really good band. We toured with them in uh, Japan two years ago. It was a fantastic tour. It was sold out. And they were, uh, I was really taken about how popular they were over there. Like, uh, I saw how the band from Finland and they were traveling in uh, Japan a lot the last years. How strong they are there. You know, they are so much more well known and popular than uh, Norwegian or Swedish band there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were great people to tour with. You know, you, uh, when you go touring, you instantly notice if you don't have a decent connection or not, you know, and I think it's all, it's like going on tour, it's like a big experiment to take 15 or 20 in my grown man, put them together on a bus and go out there and you know, see what happens, you know, and uh, with Kalpa we got a good, good connection, so we stayed uh, in touch ever since that tour and discussed touring more, and uh, I'm very glad we're going out again in December with them. Great. Uh, do you have any uh, kind of stereotypes about Finnish people that you think? Silent and drunk. Silent and drunk. You know, so pretty much the same as all the Americans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was your previous guitar player. How did that come to be? Uh, I consider yes. Uh, we play guitar was still one of my best friends. You know, I've known him for so many years. Um, I think what is done after uh, he uh, ended his part of ride has been amazing. You know, establish its own band, I think that is great. We've talked about it so many times, we tried to make something happen, but then you know it's all about schedules and finding the right moment. So for me that's such a good thing to bring him uh, back on a tour and to, I think he's looking forward to going to tour us again. Okay, uh, now I want to talk a little bit about nature. Uh, I was, since we're here in Bergen, I, I thought it would be a good opportunity to experience a little bit of the nature, went for a hike through thousand steps. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Really nice areas around here. I, I think that nature seems to be a really important element to your music. Uh, I heard that you um, get inspired for some of your lyrics and things by doing hiking trips. So tell me about your relationship with nature. Well, I'm lucky enough, lucky, lucky enough to uh, be born and raised in a small, beautiful place, you know, the uh, Songdal, which is the end of the Songdal Fjord, one of the yeah, world's largest fjord. And it is amazing nature, you know, I've got the fjords and the big mountains and the woods and everything. So that's just been a part of my life, you know. When I need to unwind, I need to really relax and get kind of get the noise away in their parts, go, go outside, you know. And uh, but I don't think that's like a metal thing, that's like a Norwegian thing to do, you know. Everyone, on a Sunday, you know, you bring your family, you go, keep on walking in this garden, which, you know, children hate it for a while, and then it is, maybe it's not a bad thing, and then they get older, and they find out. This was pretty much a good thing, you know, and uh, I, I think it's just something to, to understand that how, uh, how little part of the big world your life is, is to get out there, you know, put things in perspective is the best thing about it, you know, of course it's fun good for your body and whatever, but the main thing is to get perspective of things and I think like nature is a, is a good way to get that. When you go on tour, do you ever try to find natural elements there? If there's any time, just go find a park or yep. do you feel like you need to be connected to the earth? 
when you're not on stage. And it, it's just time. I try to do that. You know, I like to explore wherever I am, but I also enjoy going around different cities, you know, finding other things, not, not, not just about running around in nature all the time. So it's you know, going to museums, just going to watch how people live and stuff like that. I find that very inspiring as well, you know. But after, when you tour, you travel mostly in big cities, and uh, I'm not cut out for living like that. So I uh, really, really enjoy when I get back home from tour to come to more quiet places and uh, find a yeah, serenity of points. Is there any place that you're hoping to do some tours so that you can see some kind of experience some place in the world? Oh, absolutely, you know. Uh, some place reasonable that might actually happen. <laughs> We keep traveling uh, Europe over and over, but I've got the summer country series, I love that. But like when we first did Japan, that was fantastic, it's something I dreamt about, you know. And I think to see more of Asia, uh, China would be amazing, and we've been talking about that. Unfortunately, Norway has a very poor relationship with China, so it's been diff difficult to make that happen. But uh, South America, it's uh, one of the things we haven't made yet. That, uh, that's like a goal within the next couple of years, we'll do everything we can to have our proper tour in South America. So that means that you have a lot new albums coming in the future, because you have so many goals and still what to do. Yes. Uh, you know, Good I, news. Yeah, I don't see what else I'm going to do with my life. You know, uh, it feels strange if I'm still 67, 68 or something, keep making this kind of music. But then again, not making this kind of music also seems even stranger for me. You know, I don't, I don't know what else to do. You know. I, it's always what's on my mind, and uh, it's the main priority I have in my life is to work with music. So hopefully, I will do that as long as I stay alive. Do you do any other work with music? Yeah, I work uh, as both. Uh, I run a run a open air festival, and I uh, work as a promoter for a lot of bands in Norway. So uh, I work in the music industry all the time. Okay. Um, do you have any future plans, ideas, things? Because I have no ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Well, basically now we're just looking forward to getting the album out there. You know, we're very happy with it. So now it's the next phase, talking to people, see how they react to it, and of course finally the most important thing getting out to the new shows again. So that's what we're looking forward to now. Great. Okay. Okay. That's good. All right. And thank you for your time. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> thank you.